up guys Chris here back again with some more helpful health advice today we're gonna to be talking about uh, b vitamin b12 deficiencies uh, b12 is actually an extremely important vitamin for um, for your body for a lot of different reasons I mean the, there are a myriad benefits of it I'm gonna do another video on the benefits but just to sum it up real quick you know as definitely has an impact on your mood your feeling of well-being your energy in general you, and that, that includes center uh, cellular energy production uh, your memory, your heart, skin, hair, digestion, and a lot more things. It's one of those those uh, vitamins that's just crucial for a lot of different functions. And that's why I harp on uh, vitamin and mineral deficiencies so much because they're so common. And they cause all sorts of problems in people and they manifest differently in, you know, different people's, um, you know, different biochemistries. And uh, people typically will go to drugs to look for solutions to the problem. So, hey! You can't take that many pep pills at once. No problem. I'll balance it out with a bottle of sleeping pills. <laughs> Which the drugs never solve the problem. So let's continue to focus on how to address deficiencies. So today we're going to talk about the B12 deficiency. And that it's actually the, um, according to a study done in 2004 that went across, you know, tons of different parts of the world, just the large populations in the U.S., India, Mexico, Central America, South America, and even in Africa, um, they found that it was considered to be the leading uh, nutrient deficiency in the entire world. So it's got a massive reach in terms of deficiency in, across the world, and it has a huge reach in terms of its effects on your body. Now, if you're deficient in it, what you're going to notice is um you know chronic fatigue is a, a really common one because like i said it's a key nutrient for cellular energy production so you can have this fatigue where you don't even know why you're so fatigued and an interesting tidbit is actually a lot of scandinavian popula populations are genetically susceptible to this deficiency just the way that bloodline is so it's very common to be b deficient if you are from any sort of scandinavian or germanic lineage so let's kind of look at you know a bit of the basics behind b12 in general like what you're going to see on a b12 uh, in a supplement you see different types of b12 and there's cyanocobalamin hydroxycobalamin just cobalamin in general and then methylcobalamin now methylcobalamin in in my opinion is the, is the highest quality one we have the methylcobalamin in our brand new uh, truth neutral formula inflammation relief and uh, it's, it's obviously you know, the, the most bioavailable, but also um, really helps control inflammation. That's why we include it in there as well. Basically, the NIH, in terms of their own studies, they basically estimate that between 1.5% to 15% in the U.S. Uh, of people in the U.S. are deficient in B12. You know, it's it's likely even higher. There's There's been other studies, uh, like there was a study done in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition in the year 2000 that said that 39% of the U.S. population is deficient in, a B, in B12. So um, you can probably estimate that you're in that range. There are a lot of people, especially if you have any sort of fatigue issues, mood issues, that sort of thing. I'm not going to swear, but I am going to kick this doghouse down! down, down, down. Then uh, you might, you know, fall into the, the deficiency. And uh, it's simple because this deficiency is really easy to correct. Um, you can find B12 very easily. Um, there, It's, you know, in a lot of supplements, it's even in in drinks like red bull they, they put b12 in there and those sorts of drinks not not saying necessarily those are healthy but they're it's it's common and um like i said we have it in inflammation relief our supplement part of the issue with diagnosing the b12 deficiency in people is that the measurement of of serum b12 is not a very common thing it's it's something like if you go to a, a doctor and get your checkup they're not going to test for B12 typically unless you have a, a pretty woke doctor, like pretty savvy doctor who's testing you for nutrients, Now, which would be awesome if you have a doctor like that, keep that doctor because he's pretty cool. But, you know, in general, screening is not that in-depth for these sorts of things. They're just screening typically for things that they can give you a drug for. So um, you can go get a test and, and measure your nutrients. Reset yourself is a good one. There are other nutrient testing services, but you can do that for sure. In terms of some symptoms that you want to look out for to see if you are deficient in B12, and this is an issue that you want to correct. First off, you know, chronic fatigue, like I said, if you constantly feel tired. Second, if you have muscle ache and, and weaknesses that you don't really know why, you know, like uh, under, understandably, if you're exerting yourself physically uh, in a way that you didn't normally do before, you'll be sore. 
But if you're just sore for no reason, then that might be a symptom. Also joint pain is another symptom due to potentially the inflammation that's caused by the deficiency. Shortness of breath, dizziness, poor memory, and inability to focus. So this really affects your brain function as well. And at my family's restaurant. And uh, what's, what's the name the of that restaurant? restaurant? Ah, it's, it's, it's God, Bob's Burgers. every day. It's Bob's Burgers. God. Gee. Uh, which can also lead to things like depression and anxiety. If you have like heart palpitations, that's a uh, symptom as well. Bleeding gums, dental health, hy dental hygiene issues is also another um, symptom. So your gums rely on, on the B12 levels as well. So if your gums are bleeding easily, that might be a sign, say when you're, when you're flossing or something. And then just in general, like appetite and anemia, what's called pernicious anemia is another symptom of it because B12 is also connected, like everything, they're all, it's a big system, but B12 is connected to you know, iron regulation. So what do you do if you have a B12 deficiency? We're gonna talk on another video about some good food sources you can get. Um, there are, obviously you can go just get a B12 supplement and they're super easy to find. Again, I recommend methylcobalamin for that. It's just a better, more absorbable form. Um, you might have a, uh, an issue with absorption if you're a chronic smoker. Uh, they've been shown that high levels of nicotine in the body can potentially block B12 absorption. Alcoholics also are at, at risk for B12 deficiencies. I'm, I'm not drunk, all right? I just have a speech impediment. <coughs> and a stomach virus. And an inner ear infection. Anemics and people with digestive issues, uh, like leaky gut issues, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, that sort of stuff because of the absorption issues that are inherent with that. So that is B12 in a nutshell in terms of what uh, symptoms you would, you would be looking for if you are deficient in B12 and then kind of how to correct it quickly. And again, we're gonna go into some food sources and some other videos like that. So hopefully this was helpful. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this and keep, keep on learning, keep educating yourself, then subscribe to my channel. I'll see you over on the next video.